This video is not about politics, ethics, or morality, but about the process of how different bows are made and what makes them useful for the needs of the archer. Hey guys, nobody likes someone with hidden agendas, so I've got a two-fold agenda for this video and I just wanna tell you up front that when you need traditional archery gear, you'd think of doing business with me. And then secondly, that you enjoy this video and learn some stuff about this bow. And that whether you click off this video or watch it till the end, you leave with a smile. Three sections, twofold. This is complete trash. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, it's trash. Man, that's trash. Trash or treasure? These are the cheapest bows I could find on Amazon. A $59 one and a $64 one. They come with a ton of accessories. Are these trash or treasure? This video is split into three sections. Number one, how could this bow possibly be this cheap? Number two, we review specs, speed, smoothness, snagability, and sacrifice to see how this bow performs. Number three, what I like and don't like about this bow and who would this bow be for? I bought two of the exact same bows. One's a 50 pound, one's a 30 pound bow. And that way, hopefully we can see how consistent they are. And I found this super interesting when buying these bows. We've got a 30, 40, 50, and 60 pound bow. The 50 pound bow is 59 bucks. The 40 pound bow is $135. The 50 pound bow is $67. And then the 60 pound bow is $160. So their price is all over the place. And so that's why I got the 30 and 50 pound bows because they're half the price or less than that than the other ones. From my perspective as a bowyer who builds and sells bows, it's odd to me that this bow right here is cheaper than I can even pick up and source the material to build my own bow. So to understand how this bow is dirt cheap, we need to understand two parties. First, the manufacturer, and secondly, the retailer. I'm gonna oversimplify this, stick with me, this will make sense. There's some people right over here who are really good at making a lot of bows for really cheap. And we take the trip across the ocean over here, and these people have a little bit of money. And so let's take Bob, for example. Bob says, hey, I'm gonna send you some of my money, and I want exchange some bows. So Bob gets some bows and Bob says, I'm going to brand these the Black Hunter Bow. So Bob puts his logo on it, the Black Hunter Bow, and he sells it. Now there's more people over here with money. Karen says, hey, I'll send you my money too. Guess what? These people are really good at making bows cheap. So they send the bows across to Karen. And Karen says, hmm, what should I name my bow? Let's name it Glass Harrier. So Karen sells Glass Harrier bows, but guess what? Larry wants his cut. So Larry's like, hey, I got some money. Take my money. Larry really stays over here, but what he gets in exchange for his money is some bows. And what does Larry name his bow? The Deer Seeker. So take a look at all these different branded bows that are the exact same. I think there's literally around 10 of this exact same bow on Amazon branded differently. So that's how the process works, but that doesn't answer how are they made so cheap. So there's three things that go into it. First, the people who manufacture these bows are really, really good at manufacturing. They've got systems, they've got processes, give credit where credit's due. They are lean and clean and I think that's amazing. By taking the art out of bow making and turning it into a science, they can reduce their cost. Here's a couple quick examples of what they may be doing. Laminations, 
have an equal tiller. So when they have to taper down their core lamination of the bamboo, they can taper both sides the exact same, make the limbs equal. They don't test for poundage or tiller. I'm assuming this because out of the bows I've gotten, many of them have been off. Some have been negative tiller, some positive tiller, some even tiller. I think they shoot for even tiller, but it could be slightly off and all bamboo and fiberglass. So they have their entire bow is just bamboo and fiberglass. Even the handle's all bamboo, it's just dyed bamboo that's laminated together. But reducing the part of bow making that is an art that is unique to each bow and creating it into what I'm calling a science or making it all mathematical allows them to produce more bows because there's less quality checks along the way. And because their price is so cheap, that's okay because the people buying from them is okay taking the hit when a bow is off, which is quite often. The second thing they have going for them is volume. They make and buy a ton of material at once and the greater the volume, the cheaper the price comes down. And the third thing that I see is labor. So I did a bunch of research recently on this bow, where it comes from, the city, the manufacturer, and all those sort of things. So this is what I learned. First of all, in the city where this bow is produced, the average salary is 77,000. Thousand what? Well, that's not US. When you translate that to US dollars, that's $10,000. Now with that being said, if you do the math on that, if someone worked 40 hours a week, then they're going to be getting paid five-ish dollars an hour. But they are notorious for their 996 work schedule. Oh, I just split an arrow. If you're not familiar with the 996 work schedule, that's 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. six uh, days a week. And if you do that, that's 72 hours, bringing your wage from one to $3 an hour. Compare that to about $14 minimum wage where I live, what I might pay someone, the lowest I could possibly pay them for one hour of work could be a full day or more for someone else. Now, I'm not saying this is good nor bad, I don't know. I know, for example, if I drive three hours across the border to Kansas instead of Colorado, the minimum wage almost drops in half, but cost of living's way cheaper. With that being said, if they can make it on that cheap, then they can sell it to, for $50 to someone here in the US, where someone here in the US can take that $50 and sell it for $150, and then maybe take 30% of that 150, and they put 50 in their pocket for taking on the risk. But that doesn't solve the problem, because if the online retailer is buying this from China for $50, how can they be selling it for 60? They'd be taking a loss. Here's my three hypotheses on why it's so cheap right now. They ordered too many bows in 30 and 50 pounds, and they're trying to go through the inventory because sitting on inventory is dead money. Absolutely, possibly a marketing trick as well. Sometimes people will price things at cost in order just to get as many reviews as they can. And once they can build up that review base, other people are like, wow, this bow's good. And then they raise the price triple, and people are thinking, oh, this bow's well worth $150, $200, when everybody who reviewed that bow got it for 50 and are basing it on the value of a $50 bow, not a $200 bow. So it could be a little bit of a marketing trick like that as well. And lastly, a reason why this bow could be so cheap is because some people on Amazon realize, hey, people on YouTube like to do the Amazon's cheapest. And so they'll do Amazon's cheapest review. Let's just crash the price of one of our products, hoping we can get some free marketing from some random people on YouTube who have biased opinions about these products. Yeah, suckers. Yeah, because if you click on the link from this product and go buy it and it's $60, I make 60 cents on that. So normally I bet they're priced at $130 to $150 for this bow. I think it's on a super ridiculous cheap deal because they bought 3,000 bows and only sold 50 of them so far and they're like, what are we gonna do? So they called me up and asked me to make this video. That's a complete joke. This video is actually sponsored by Shatterproof Archery. Hi, my name is Kaz and here at Shatterproof Archery, I take care of the orders that you place and it's my pleasure to serve you. Today we're starting a huge sale, 10% off our entire store, free shipping on orders over $99, including our bows. And then also we're giving away these two bows that Kramer's reviewing. If you would like one of them, comment below and we'll pick two of you to send these bows to. It's our honor to serve you and thank you so much for your business. Sell goes through Monday night, Cyber Monday. And so go to the website, shatterproofarchery.com 
and get yourself what you need. Now let's get into this specific bow review because we did find some different things with this bow than we did with the Black Hunter. Also, one more thing to note is I've reviewed products in the past and they double in price often right after I review them. So, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> First up is the 50 pound bow. Here we're gonna pull it on the tillering tree to see its poundage. And it looks like we ended with a 45 pound draw. So it's five pounds off what it's marketed. Secondly, we're going over to the chronograph to see how fast this bow is. The bow clocks in at 177 feet per second, which is really fast. If you've seen the Black Hunter bow review, this shoots very similar and very fast. This is the snagability test. The idea of it originally was to see how fast you can pick up a bow and become good with shooting it. I feel like this isn't the same as when I used to do this test because I've done so many bows from now. I'm pretty confident with this exact bow, but let's take five shots and see what we do. First shot's low. I can make my quick adjustment. Let's do six. All right, check it out. So these were at 18 yards. The first shot was a little low. You can see all of them are slightly right. The next five are in there. Snagability, it's good. The sacrifice of this bow is just a nice evening driving DoorDash. Mowing lawns for two hours is one to two days of working at fast food. Going to 100 McDonald's and picking up the change through the drive-thru. The sacrifice of this bow is like finding three pieces of free furniture on Craigslist and flipping them on Facebook Marketplace. In other words, with some creativity, some grit, and some effort, this bow has very little to very little sacrifice. <laughs> this bow will cost you 50 to $150, depending on the time of year, the branding company, who's selling it specifically, and the poundage. Now to the smoothness scale. How smooth does it feel when you shoot it? This is the factor I generally care about even more than speed. I wanna know that this bow is smooth. I wanna know that it's comfortable so that I don't have any flinching when I shoot. And this bow is really smooth. If you want more detail on the smoothness scale, check out the Black Hunter Recurve Bow Review, but this passes. Now jumping more into the specs. The first bow that's supposed to be 50 pounds is a 45 pound bow. The second bow is supposed to be a 30 pound bow, and it was, it is a 30 pound bow. Now, if you're comparing the internet description of the people who posted the Amazon listing to the reality of real life with this bow, it could never be further from the truth. Because I'm a busy guy, I deployed CAS to painstakingly read the entire booklet. Is there anything we need to know? Also, you can watch our YouTube tutorial videos if you need any additional instruction on using the binoculars. We're always happy to help. Warning, we're about to get really sarcastic, but it's not even sarcastic because it's completely true. Do not cock your sh the string all the time. <laughs> Cocking the string all the time will cause the limbs to lose, draw weight, and get twisted. As far as we can tell, cocking the string means stringing your bow, so... <laughs> I could make an entire video about this next two minute section! Alright, <laughs> you can watch it. So here's the thing, I'm okay with typos and mess ups, I do that all the time. But when you're just flat out lying, that's annoying. So this is the difference between their bow and all other bows. First, their bows have laminated material. Other bows don't. Huh. Their bow's 175 feet per second. Other bows are only 150. Huh. Their bow, 2.42 pounds, which that's actually pretty accurate. Other bows, three pounds. Huh. Detailed instructions with a bow stringer? Yes. Other people? No. Aluminum T-shaped sight? Yes, but without pre-installed threaded bushings. Other people? No. It didn't come with that though. It didn't come, it didn't come with that. So. With the T-site, we emailed them to see how their customer service was and they have a customer satisfaction guarantee. They'll email us back within 24 hours. We haven't heard yet and it's been 24 hours. Vibration and noise proof system? Their bow? Yes. Other bows? No. <laughs> so this is the vibration and noise proof system, so we shouldn't feel any vibration or hear any noise if this performs accurately. So let's pay attention and we'll be real quiet. 
I didn't feel anything or hear anything. Yeah, the arrow shot. Huh. Huh. <laughs> this is getting too bad. <laughs> Weather resistant? Their bow? Yes. Other bows? No. <laughs> So we've got these two completely different bows here. This one's from Black Hunter. This one's this one that we're reviewing today. And this one's supposed to be weatherproof. Other bows, no. Let's test it out. Holy cow. Yeah, that burned me. <laughs> US based customer service and company. Their bow, yes. Other bows, no. Hmm. You can bet any other bow you buy on the market, no, not US based. <laughs> no, it doesn't even make any sense. It doesn't make sense. Someone who doesn't know English wrote this and knows nothing about archery. This whole little section was for a purpose, not for no reason at all. You're like, this is nothing about the bow, Kramer. It's not anything about the bow and that's the exact point because the people selling the bow don't know much about the bow. I think they're trying to just make a little bit of money. They outsource the listing to somebody else to do. On their photos, you can tell everything's a stock photo. They have one picture of the bow and they throw that in with everything else. They even have pictures of archery tag. They have pictures of a compound bow showing the length of their bow. It's just done by somebody who doesn't know archery. The, the, the takeaway of all of this for you is that just pay attention when you're looking through a listing and you'll know if the person or the company knows what they're talking about. If you go over to Bear Archery's listings on Amazon, you're gonna get some really solid stuff because they know what they're talking about. So that doesn't mean the bow is bad. I actually really like this bow as a bow itself, but I just had to throw this in here because it just, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't get more fun than this. Now jumping into the third part of this video, here is what I do and don't like about this bow. This is pretty typical. There's some good things, some bad things. First thing I'll cover are the things I like. And it's, it's a good design overall. It shoots, it shoots really fast actually and you can become accurate with this. I guess another thing I will say I like is that it has the full package. It comes with everything you need to start shooting a bow except for arrows and a target. They give you a paper target, but that won't stop the arrow. That's just a place to aim. So you might want to put that on something. Disclaimer. <laughs> put that on something a little stronger than drywall. Another thing that comes in real strong is the price. The facets or factors of this bow, the best parts of this is the arrow rest is good quality. The beaver is good quality. The paper targets are fantastic quality. There's five of these. I mean, I, I pay 60 bucks just for this. <laughs> Not to mention the bow that came along with it. <laughs> the wax is less than perfect. Both of these bows are an even tiller, meaning it's the same distance on the top limb and the bottom limb. Let's see how they design it. They have laid out the bow to where the center of the bow is in the handle. In general, I like a positive tiller with that, but even's gonna be close enough and it's shooting pretty good. So ultimately on both of these and the Black Hunter recurved Black Hunter longbow, the tiller has been consistent on all of them, even though the poundage has not been. So I do like that the tiller's been pretty consistent. Let's get into the negative factors of this bow right now. The first thing that really sticks out to me is actually the bowstring. It's an endless loop bowstring. We sell tons of bowstrings. That's our bread and butter. I'm not talking about that. You know I don't prefer that. But the serving material, it's way too loose. And so check this out. <laughs> you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't be able to do that. They did include a brass knuckle on top here, uh, but this is, that's, that's not acceptable for my bow, I don't like that. The next thing I dislike about this is, hmm, I can't really judge this as a custom built bow because it's not. And since I'm in that world a whole lot right now, it's hard to not say I hate this handle when as far as this cheap of a bow, it's a pretty good handle. So it's a, it's a D, it's about, this is about as good as handle you're gonna get for a bow under $200 from the 14 or 15 I've bought and tested. So overall the handle's pretty good, even though it's, 
It's not like a custom bow. Another thing that goes without saying is the inconsistency in the bows. So the 50 pound bow is a 45 pound bow. The 30 pound was dead on pretty much, so that's good. But this is what I found with reviewing cheap bows is you can't necessarily always trust the poundage. I've had about a 60% of the time the poundage is different than what it's marketed as. One of the other things I don't like is you can tell it's not from someone who shoots bows who writes these documents about the bow and how to use it. So on all their descriptions, everything's deluxe, everything's master, everything's the best quality, everything's premium, and those are just words. I mean, you can find all of these products individually on Amazon. They have the cheapest bowstring on Amazon, the cheapest beaver string silencers on Amazon. These tabs I've bought before to test out and they're just trash, like a $6 tab on Amazon. So they have all of these cheapest, most lowest quality products to make this a really cheap kit. And then they market it as the deluxe highest quality equipment you can get, which is, um, False. I'm not a big fan of this tab for a couple reasons. Just to make it quick, the biggest reason is the leather is not great quality and that makes it not enjoyable to shoot, plus the shape and other factors. But the arm guard is not my favorite either because of the fastening mechanisms are quite annoying. You've got to slide through once you get it on. And then, then once it's on, you can tighten it down. It feels okay, it's gonna do the job. If this is all you had, I would definitely use this um, if you're a beginner because this will prevent you from creating a trigger in your brain of pain with releasing an arrow, which can really screw up your shot early on. So wear an arm guard, this would be better than nothing for sure, but it's not my favorite. Now you guys know I don't like, well, maybe you don't know, I've made a video before about how I don't like these bow stringers and the reason is it is only fits specific bows. So the tip overlays have to be the right size for it to fit in here. This will work with the bow it came with, but the thing is it won't work on any other bows if you expand your collection. What it comes down to for me with this bow is who it's for. And here's the interesting thing. This is 80% of the way there, which is really good for beginners. And they can do that because it's not custom built each bow. They build three individual parts and then put them together without shooting them and ship them out. So you're gonna get close to really good and you may accidentally get really good and you may get five, 10, 20 pounds off at some times because mistakes can happen. With that being said, that's what they're sacrificing for giving you a really cheap bow is you're sacrificing the ability to be confident knowing exactly what the bow is going to be. With that, this bow is not for the experienced archer necessarily. This would be a good gateway bow to get into archery. It's a fantastic first bow. If you're interested, get a poundage lighter than you think you need and enjoy shooting it. That's what I would say. It's a beginner bow. It's a really, like, I enjoy shooting this bow. There's nothing wrong with it. I can see how if you're getting started in archery or trying to help somebody get started, to get this bow right here with all these accessories that come with it and then to get some arrows, set you up completely. You can do that, well, I guess if this is 60 bucks, you could do that for under two or under $100 and get shooting to see if you enjoy archery. That's something that this bow could be used really well for. And if it was me personally, I would buy this bow and then I might do a couple of the checks I did here today. And if you receive it and it's not the poundage you ordered, that's in my opinion, justified means to ask for a return and ask for a different bow with the right poundage.